professional sides. But the future of the club is now in doubt, after a row between the local council and the owners of the stadium who want to redevelop the site. Is this another example of London's local organic culture being crushed by redevelopment? Andrew Criani has more. Yes! Yes! A wet Tuesday night in Dulwich. Welcome to one of the best supported non-league football teams in the world. It's a hipster club, isn't it? Number one. Uh, but it's a hipster club that has a, a visible left to centre agenda. It's a very unusual and interesting place in the encroaching modernisation of London. This is a Tuesday night fixture. We've got 1,200 people to a non-league ground. But the future of Dulwich Hamlet Football Club might now be in doubt because of a row between the people who own this site and the local council. The stadium, Champion Hill, isn't owned by Dulwich Hamlet Football Club but by Meadow Residential, an American-backed property developer who wants to build homes and a new stadium on the land. In the meantime, they've helped fund the running of the club to a tune of £170,000 a year. But Meadow have clashed with the local authority. Southwark say they aren't happy with the plans for a number of reasons, including a lack of affordable housing. Meadow, well, they've said that the whole site is no longer financially viable and have pulled all their funding for Dulwich Hamlet Football Club. As a result, the club don't know how they're going to pay the players or perhaps even continue as a club. It's quite serious when you've, you've set your budget or your budget was set for you, you've signed players, they're under contract, um, they've got to be paid in accordance with that contract. If Meadow were, want to go out of their way to, to make the club die, then that's on their head. And they came in with a lot of promises what they would do uh, for no fault of the clubs but, but their own. Uh, they, haven't, they haven't met those, those, those promises. Criticism of the developer has come from the very top of London politics. It's the glue, if you like, that binds that community together. And I think the developer needs to recognise what local residents want, but also what's possible, and it is possible, for the developer to reach a deal with the council. That means we have a thriving non-league football club. We have uh, genuinely affordable homes, but also de development that brings profits not unreasonably to the developer. The Southwark Council have also come in for criticism. The plan was going to work like this. In the corner there, you can see where the stadium currently is. That was going to be flattened and housing built on there instead. The AstroTurf here, though, well, this was going to be transformed into a state-of-the-art stadium, the new home of Dulwich Hamlet. But this land is actually owned by Southwark, who have leased it to the club for years. But just a couple of weeks ago, the council announced they were taking the land back. No land means no new stadium. The whole deal fell apart. Well, the problem here is, is a, it's a problem that's common not just to, to football, but to everybody in London or, or everybody in cities all over the world. The issue here is simply, like most problems in the world, to do with land prices. Um, you have a football club here, which is a notably community football club, sitting on a piece of land which um, you know, is worth far more than what the football club brings into it as a business. But for now, the future of Dulwich Hamlet is not in the hands of the club, but the council and the property developer. Andrew Cryan reporting there. Well, I'm joined by Peter John, leader of Southwark Council, and by Andrew McDaniel, a partner at the developers Meadow Residential. It surely isn't been between or impossible for you to reach an agreement, because clearly you want houses built, you'd like to build houses. So why can't you agree? And let me put it to you this way. What is your bottom line that stops you saying to the developers, get on with it? What is the problem? Well, I've been a councillor in this area for 15 years now, uh, Norman, and throughout that time, Greendale, the bit of metropolitan open land, has been incredibly important. It's been under the control of the football club, but it hasn't been maintained by them. Mm -hmm. And so we've always been clear with the developer, you know, that green space has to come back for local people to the council. And you can build whatever you want on your site, but also you have to present, uh, preserve and protect Dulwich Hamlet Football right, Club. Right, let me stop you there. Andrew McDaniel, what is your bottom line? What is it you have to have to go ahead with building the homes? We want to build, be able to build enough homes for Londoners to be able to support uh, preservation What's of What's stopping knowledge. you doing that? Uh, simple as finding a suitable development plan with, with the council that allows us to build those homes. And in the meantime, is it not fair to say you are using the football club basically to put a bit of pressure, to put a bit of squeeze on the council saying, look, 
if you do not give, the football club gets it. I think it's unfair. I think the history here is that we came into this development about three and a half years ago. The club was already in financial distress. We've been that club's benefactor for three and a half years, trying to find a suitable development solution that saves that football club and provides housing for Londoners, both market rate and affordable housing for Londoners. Um, unfortunately, we just haven't been able to found a, find a proposal that we both agree on that saves that club. Uh, Peter John, it is fairly extraordinary, isn't it, for a developer to pick up the tab for a football club. They are already going out of their way to support the local community. Why can't you cut them a bit more slack and let them get on with the development? Well, I think the, the difficulty is that cutting the slack means invading metropolitan open land, which is really valuable green space in our very crowded uh, city. And I think the problem here was that the developer bought this piece of land on the assumption that they'd be able to build on that metropolitan open land without really checking with us first. And when they came to see us, and they, you know, three and a half years ago, they came to see us after they bought the land, I said, no, you cannot be but there. We've been very clear on this. Where throughout. you are now is lose-lose. You lose the football club, you lose the homes. We don't need to lose either. You can have homes, not as many homes as Meadow wants to build. Who's going to build, build them? Uh, well, if it's not Meadow, then somebody else. We'll build council housing there very happily. Is that right? Um, someone else could just come along. If you guys don't want to do it, fine, and we'll get someone else in to do it. We own the land and we won't be selling the land because we came here to deliver housing. And okay, we, so and we'd want to deliver housing okay, throughout London. All, all right, all right. These guys own the land. How are you going to get another developer in? Well, uh, you know, if they just want to sit on the land and not develop it and not deliver the housing they can deliver, which would be 50 or 60 flats, we think, then that's up to them. But I don't think it does yeah. the community I, or the football club any favours. Can I please make a point here? Because I definitely did not come here to fight. Uh, our development proposal did not involve invading metropolitan open land. We were simply replacing a pitch with a pitch. Um, so I, I think the word invading is, is a tough word to, to swallow. I'd also like to say that matters of density are probably best judged by independent parties. I agree with, with our mayor, um, who's also, uh, through the GLA, written to us supporting the levels of density that we need to provide this development. I would also point out that Southwark's own design review panel agrees with our levels of density. Okay, Peter John, is part of the issue here that Southwark has already been wrapped over the knuckles for not building enough affordable housing and now you're playing the tough guy determined to put the squeeze on developers to show you're really serious about it. Not at all. We, we, we get uh, affordable housing out of most developments if not all developments and we require 35% affordable housing. That's not been present in these proposals. Uh, it's a scheme that wanted to go on to metropolitan open land. There are unacceptable elements and we will at the end of the day we also want to see the football. Okay well protected. fortunately or Siobhan McDonough has some experience <laughs> of this oh, so you God, are the God, mediator. The oh, Step one. in and because this happened with Wimbledon. Oh my gosh, yeah. Wimbledon Football Club back in the early 90s, Sam Hammam, and I'm not associating you with Mr Hammam. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr Hammam, uh, Sam Hammam owned Wimbledon Football Ground on Plough Lane uh, and um, evicted uh, Wimbledon Football Club in spite of all his uh, protestations to support them. They ended up at QPR and later transferred to Milton Keynes. So we lost our team in South West London and we lost a lot of great football supporters who felt that the game was no longer about them. And what was the effect on the community? I mean, you've got a, you know... A... Uh, it was quite, it, it was devastating a lot. I mean, my dad's, my dad's passed now, but he was a season ticket holder. It just completely put him off football because he thought the Football uh, Association, those involved weren't about the game. They were about money, about development, uh, and that simply supporters were a front for all that. Well, just on that point, Andrew McDaniel, do you have any sense of your corporate responsibility in terms of the local community? Here you have a thriving, very distinctive football club, which you are, in effect, going to pull the plug on. Absolutely, we have a corporate responsibility. That's why we've held this football together, this football club together for the last three and a half years. Uh, it's absolutely not my desire to see it close. Mm. Uh, we do not own it, unfortunately. Uh, and we have tried to do and will continue to try to do as much as we can to keep it alive. And, Nikki, I mean, the problem basically is this, isn't it? There's no land in London. There is no land, uh, you know, but I do have sympathy uh, with Peter. We have to make sure that we are protecting our communities. Uh, there's nothing worse in London than having, uh, you know, uh, communities that don't uh, live side by side. That's what's so important about Westminster. We've got to have these mixed neighbourhoods, um, rich and poor and everything in between living together. And, you know, if it's down to one football club, we've got to save that football club. I couldn't it's agree about with you the anymore. heart of the community and also provide homes. So I, I, I think I too, I, 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 I'm, I too I'm, 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 I'm with I Peter on this one. The, okay. I, I too respect the community. I am a Londoner. OK, we may not get agreement on the development, but can you offer any reassurances to the club, to the football club, just as an entity in itself, that it will be kept going one way or the other? 
as a council, we've said we are 100% behind the club. We want to see Dulwich Hamlet prosper uh, on their current site. Could you step in and fund it? Well, if need be, we'll do whatever is necessary to keep the club going. We've made that clear. Andrew McDaniel? Uh, I have no problem with funding the club. The only thing I need is a viable business plan such that I can actually find the funds to, to, to provide that support. OK, there's some way to go yet, I, I fear. Gentlemen, thanks uh, very much indeed for Thank your time. You. Well, on Wednesday, the Chancellor...